Hello and welcome to the Railway Stakes edition of The Box Seat. My name's Scott Embry, taking you through racing at Ascot, Saturday the 21st of November, better known to us punters as Christmas Day. This is the best day on the racing calendar in the West. We're going to get perfect conditions too. Sunny, 28 degrees, track a good four, rail three metres. Straight into race number one, the Tourism WA Trophy. Now this race is going to be highlighted by the return of William Pike aboard Long Beach. It was trailed by Chicks Pick for the back battle storm. Cliffs of Comfort balanced up at the 250. Snuck away from Boom Tastic Elite Street, winding up down the outside. Highland Beat about to get off the heels of the leader. Cliffs of Comfort stopping Elite Street, pounces upon it. It got them in the last 50. Dashes to the lead and races home to Elite Street. Well, that is Long Beach running second to the highly progressive galloper Elite Street. Elite Street's going to go to next weekend's Crown Perth Winter Bottom Stakes. Long Beach comes back to a ratings race here, reunites with Willie Pike. I think he's going to be about even money, I'm thinking. Toss of the coin odds. Punter's going to be all aboard Long Beach in the first. He's probably going to have to go a last to first victory, but it's only a six horse field. He's the best horse in this race. I think he wins to start the card. Welcome back, Willie Pike. Number two, sorry, number three in the opener, Long Beach for me. From five, Boomtastic. This mare comes from the exact same replay that we just watched there. She's a strong on pace mare and she'll give them something to run down. Number four, Nakovi, stable mate to Boomtastic. Bitterly disappointing last start, but very good first up. And then I went to number two, Don't Fuss. First ride in the West for Brad Rewilla. So good luck to him on his WA venture. I think he's probably going to run somewhere around third or fourth in his first ride. Long Beach to kick punters off to a flyer in the opener. Three, five. Four and two. Race number two at Ascot, the Mum Champagne Crystal Slipper for these two year olds. The babies go around for $100,000 at 1100 metres. And we're going to go back two starts ago, watch the debut effort of Diamond Blue. And Galaxy Cat went out after Gorgeous Gossip, the favourite, quickly around their heels for Tal Fem though, and down the outside, starting to run on is Diamond Blue for Tal Fem, Diamond Blue, and the lady is a vamp right all on her own out near the middle of the track. The leader's for Tal Fem, for Tal Fem, she's digging in hard too for Tal Fem, for Tal Fem, she had to fight. I think Ted Martinovich has got himself a pretty handy horse here. Mitchell Pateman definitely going to have his work cut out, because gate number eight is a little bit sticky. But I think with even luck here, Diamond Blue goes very close and he's going to go around at 10 or $11 as well. So he's probably one of my each way plays for the day, in fact, in the two-year-old's race. Lots of unknowns, but race experience counts for a lot. And this horse has had two race outings and they've both been very, very good without any luck whatsoever. So fingers crossed for Diamond Blue and Mitch Pateman, they can get an ounce of luck on the weekend and give this a shake at odds. Number one on top for me in the Crystal Slipper. From five, Liwa, this filly was absolutely plunged on debut. She opened up 550 with Tab Touch. She dumped around $2.40. The punters burnt their fingers, but I am expecting them to follow up because her run was probably a little bit better than what I first thought live. Number 12 on debut, Heavenly Waters from the Albany stables of Roy Rogers. Thought I saw, saw something in this filly in her one and only trial down at Albany. And number 11, Flying Missile, who was oh so impressive in a 400 metre jump out leading from go to woe. My numbers in race number two, one, five, 12 and 11. Race number three at Ascot, Tab Touch, Betty Your Bet Handicap for the Stayers, 2200 metres. This is the impressive last start win up along the inside for Midnight Blue them though and desperately searching for run but the split came the way for Midnight Blue sprinting through along the fence Adornment had hit the front Adornment's the leader 150 to go but here comes Midnight Blue Midnight Blue finishing powerfully against the inside grabbed Adornment Midnight Blue tucked up against the Dulux was too good got a bit of luck well, Midnight Blue here looking for back-to-back -back wins goes from an 1800 up to a 2200 meters tick Draws a gate, maps well, and you guessed it, Willie Pike. I think this might be a case of back Pike, drink what you like in race number three. Pretty keen on his chances here. Looks to be one main danger, and that's come right back. This is a progressive stayer from Adam Durant's yard. Rock hard fit. Peter Hall, he knows how to ride these stayers. I'm sure it's going to be a contest here, but I am expecting the Cerise and White and William Pike to prevail in the finish. Four from six, number 11, Maserati. Steve Parnham obviously injured, so it's going to be a wonderful pickup ride for somebody. And from the gate, Maserati will get every opportunity. 
Number five next best, Paddy Shadow. The draw doesn't really worry her. She's a natural backmarking mare anyway. My numbers in race number three, four, six, 11, and five. Race number four at Ascot is the first of the features. It's the Tab Touch Placid Arc Stakes at 1200 metres. A listed race for the three-year-olds. We're going to watch the very impressive and effortless last start win of Shantalk. Shan talk out Danny and all day session as the sprint goes on. Charlton Eddy in front, 250 to go, but now the Philly Shan talk draws alongside. Shan talk, Charlton Eddy. Shan talk's got the upper hand from Charlton Eddy. They went to the hundred now, and she put pay to him. She comes away now, and it's all over. Shan talk was far too good for Charlton Eddy. They... Well, that was Shan talk sitting outside Charlton Eddy, putting him to the sword and running away in the end. She steps to 1,200 metres for the first time. Not quite sure how she's going to go, but she's going to get a map condition to really suit here. If she's sitting on the back of Charlton Eddy, like she similarly was last time, with Acromantula sitting in the breeze, she's going to get a wonderful suck run at 1,200 metres. Set weights and penalties suits her. I think she's pretty hard to beat here. But that being said, there's four or five other legitimate winning chances. It runs a lot deeper than just her. I am putting her on top, number four, Shan Talk. Five, Mystical View, was a really good run first up this campaign when winning at Northam. A really good run second up as well. The blinkers go on, comes off seven days, a mile back to 1200. A lot of red lights flashing there. Make sure you do keep Mystical View safe. Number three, Queen Brown, in a pretty similar sort of profile. She comes back out of those three-year-old Phillies features, where she just found 1400 maybe a little bit too far. And then Acromantula, couldn't have been more impressive on Melbourne Cup Day on debut. My numbers in race number four, four, five, three, and two. Race number five at Ascot, the people start handicap at 1,400 metres. We're going to watch the last start effort. It's only second career outing as well for Western Empire. Road on the rail into the straight first law ranged up hit the front at the 250 kicks about a length clear empire rain down the outside now starting to run on very well western empire first law is the leader Kalaru finally gets a split near the inside diving western empire they'll go to it all there's nothing in this at all well that's western empire running second in the faretha it's amazing to think that he's the first emergency for the guineas so he's probably going to sweat on a run there and I dare say if there's any scratchings at all, he will go to the guineas and he will scratch from this race. So it makes it a bit tough from a tipping perspective. For that reason, I'm going to go with a horse who I know is going to run in this field. And that's Tiff has spoken here. Was first up no trial for Sharon Miller and Paul Harvey. And I thought ran really well behind Point Taken, who might well be a progressive mare that's getting under the guard. Here, second up, drawn a gate, well weighted. I thought well placed as well. So I'm going each way if Western Empire starts and then win only if Western Empire is scratched. But I'm putting Tiff as spoken on top, number eight. Number 12, Western Empire. Clearly, if he doesn't get a run in the guineas, he's going to be nearly even money in this. Very impressive with what he could produce at only his second start in a listed three-year-old race. Number five, Sweet Dreamin', ever consistent as all of Holly Lock's gallopers are. Number two in Sophie's song. I'm maybe a touch disappointed with what she produced last start after she got it soft in front, but Brad Parnham will have her right over the speed. Race number five, people start handicap numbers eight, 12, five and two. Race number six at Ascot, the Sky Racing WA Guineas for the three-year-olds at a mile. We go back seven days ago to watch the fighting win of the champion Phillies in Watch Me Dance. Side with a run. Parnham's hard at work on Snickerdoodle Dandy. Back in heavy traffic from Brave Dream. Indigo Blue had hit the front. Watch Me Dance is coming through now in the middle. Watch Me Dance. Indigo Blue from Salaya. Brave Dream wider out. Indigo Blue digging in. Watch Me Dance stride for stride. It's Indigo Blue. Watch Me Dance. Tight camera. Can't pick it. What well, that was Watch Me Dance for Steve Wolf. You will not see that on Saturday. I guarantee it. I don't do that whatsoever. But I do think that this filly is quite hard to beat. I'm going with one of the Colts and Geldings to win the Guineas, and I'm going with Dom to shoot here. We will need each way. I think we'll get each way around 5, 550, because he is a horse that gets back in the run, but he was so impressive in a pretty moderate uh, field in the Faretha, it must be said. He finished seventh. It looked disappointing to the eye, but you break it down, fastest last 1,000, 8, 6, 4, and 200 metre splits of the race, it looked like a horse that was getting out to a mile and with more pace in this race, which I'm confident there will be, he looks the one to beat here. So it's each way for me in the guineas with Dom to shoot.
Clearly, the Philly Watch Me Dance is going to make her presence felt. She was awesome last week on a heavily rain affected track. Number one, Gemma's son, wasn't this a run at weight for age in the Listia. Goes up sharply in weight, but I think here he's starting to show that maybe the mile is up his alley. Number 14, next best, Nat's Brave Angel, another one of these fillies who I all think are live chances of, winning, of beating the boys in the guineas. My numbers in race six, two, 11, one, and 14. Race number seven at Ascot is the Crown Perth Jungle Mist Classic, a listed race for the fillies and mares at 1200 metres. We're going to go back a couple of months and watch the last start win of Tycoon Storm. Headed the remainder, they're into the straight at the 300. Tycoon Storm let go, joined Elementaria Peppy Jack. Rebel Knight down the outside, Expressionist flat footed in behind them, and then came Mr. Minikin running on. But Tycoon Storm led with 100 left to go. Tycoon Storm's a length and a half. Rebel Knight, then came Mr. Minikin. It'll be too good, Tycoon Storm. Tycoon Storm enjoyed the perfect. Well, Tycoon Storm is sort of the newcomer on the block here. Ten starts, six wins. No doubt was tipped out for a bit of a freshen up after that race to be set for these fillies and mares features to try and grab her a little bit of black type. But at the set weights and penalties conditions, I simply can't go past this top weight in Flower of War. As a Metro 97, she should be giving almost 10 kilos to Tycoon Storm, the second favourite. But she gets in with only 57 and a half, which is exactly the same weight as she carried to win the Marjorie Charlson, where she beat Angelic Ruler. She beat Flirtini. It has to be good form for a race like this, and she was plunged last start. I'm going with her, and I think she can cross two to lead. Number one, and probably one of the better bets, Flower of War. Eight Tycoon Storm, clearly progressive, clearly going to get a nice run and hard to beat. Number four in Why Choose Her. If she'd drawn a gate, I had her as a definite winning chance here. But unfortunately for Ash Maley, Lucy Warwick, they're probably going to have to drag back to near on last. And then we go with the enigmatic flower of Scotland. Don't know what you're going to get with her, but her best is no doubt good enough. My numbers in race number seven, one, eight, four and five. This is the feature, the Kieran Railway Stakes, $1 million Group 1 for 2020. We're going to go back last week to the Ascot Gold Cup and watch the effortless win of Too Close the Sun. As a party gave too close the sun, he's head, he bounded away from them. Too close the sun, shot about three in front, Utgard Loki had run to second from Harry Thomas, followed further back by Royal Command, but too close the sun is a day in front. They approach the 100, too close the sun, about three clear of Utgard Loki, and he's relishing the conditions, too close the sun, too close the sun by four. Second Utgard... Well, there's too close the sun, winning by four and a quarter lengths on a heavy eight at 1,800 metres. He backs up off seven days, he comes back to a mile here, and I think this draw is actually perfect for him. If there are no scratchings and the emergencies come out, he'll come from gate 16 into 12. He'll slide across, he'll most likely settle outside of great shot. From there, it's race on. At handicap conditions, 53 kilos. I think he is so super progressive. I actually think he's the winner of this race. I'm going to make him one of the best bets on the program as well. Too close to the sun, very keen on him, and we get each way in the railway stakes of 2020. Number 11, Inspirational Girl, a deserving favourite, no doubt. She beat home too close to the sun last start in the Asian Bow. Does get, meet him a half a kilo worse, and I think that he's only improving. So I think they can close the gap here, and that makes things very interesting. Number eight next best, and that's Red Can Man. We talk about the Listia Stakes as a warm-up feature. Well, he gets so much weight on KC for being a very, very good run. I then go to the Mayor, the Group 1 winning Mayor in KC. Heartbreak for Steve Parnham. Absolutely flat and shattered for him and the Parnham family. But hopefully, for whoever does pick up the ride, she puts in an absolute bottler. My number's in the railway, 14, 11, 8 and 4. Race number nine at Ascot is the Carbine Club of WA Stakes at 1,400 metres, a listed race to finish it off. We're going back two starts ago to watch the win of Laver Rod. Outside, River Dance had run to third, waiting for the run, Laver Rod behind them, Multiverses down the outside, and they're being followed by Celebrity Queen, starting to weave away through the traffic with 150 left to go, and now on the outside, reaching the lead here, coming quickly, Celebrity Queen, Laver Rod driving through though, Laver Rod and Celebrity... Well, that was Laver Rod sitting close handy to the speed, beating both Cliffs of Comfort, but more importantly, Celebrity Queen in that run. He then went to a weight for Rage in the Listia. He was the worst weighted horse in that race. He comes back to set weights and penalties conditions. So he drops out of a group race 
into a listed race and drops four kilos. Don't get those conditions very often. He also gets a listed 1400 with not a lot of speed. So I think Pat Carberry will be very much right over the top of it. And he has to be hard to beat in these race conditions. Number nine on top for me in the lucky last, and that's Laver Rod. Number two, Flo, backing up off seven days out of the RJ Peters. He made truly great work for the win, and that has to be pretty good form for a race like this. Number five, Nerf Bosk. Hasn't, uh, and hasn't Neville Parnham got this horse absolutely flying since he brought it across from the East Coast? Number eight, Pims Royale, back to trials after the Northern Cup and that trial was electric. My numbers in the Carbine Club race nine, nine, two, five, and eight. Rolling straight into best bets for Ascot on Railway Stakes Day, 21st of November, 2020. I think we can get off with a bang in race number one. It's number three, Long Beach. I then go to the feature, the Railway Stakes race number eight, and I'm with horse 14, too close the sun. I'll see you out at Ascot on Saturday. Can't wait for your company there. Tickets all at perthracing.com.au and a stack of social media content to follow.